once again we have yet another Tesla driver making the national or actually I should say international news uh, this time a Model S driver in a blue Model S was caught presumably or I should say suspectedly of sleeping while under the influence of autopilot uh, now I will st state straight off the bat I do not condone sleeping while using autopilot to drive the vehicle uh, you should still pay attention to what you're doing in your surroundings now I will also be the first say that it is possible to fall asleep while under auto autopilot. Well, it's also possible to fall asleep without auto autopilot, but autopilot does make it a little easier to doze off. Now, uh, the first time uh, you guys were with me the first time that I drove autopilot home, because we did it when I picked up this, uh, my 90D after dropping off my old, uh, my old 2013 uh, 60 kilowatt car. Uh, so we got to learn a little bit about autopilot. Well, um, I had to go back to sign a few more papers a couple days later uh, at the service center. Now it's, that's our drive. And uh, I will admit I started to doze off. Well, what do you know? Uh, think back to your old days in high school, old driver's ed class, that old highway hypnosis. Well, as if highway hypnosis, just the mundane droning of the wheels, slow, you know, steady pace, going and going and going, as if that wasn't enough. Now, imagine having less to do. So, think of it this way. If you're driving somebody else, your passenger is kind of nothing to do, you know, not playing on their phone or anything. They kind of just drift off. Well... The same thing kind of just happens when you're a passenger behind your own steering wheel. And that's kind of how autopilot kind of takes over. So, I mean, there we go. Now, autopilot's doing all the work. So, you're just sitting along, sitting along. You know, even if it's stop and go traffic, the car's doing it all for you, especially stop and go traffic because it's so tedious and gives you such a headache. Always properly signal. And check your surroundings. Once more. Autopilot did two flawless lane changes. Should we make it a third? As you can see, autopilot takes a lot out of the driver's hands. Now, Autopilot's not infallible. In fact, Tesla plainly states that it's a beta. And that you should keep your hands on the wheel at all times. Obviously, very few people actually do keep their hands on, their, on the wheel at all times. But at least most of them are paying attention. So, what would happen if a driver were to fall asleep? Simple. It's not fall asleep and wake up at your destination like so many people think it is, or at least so many non-Tesla drivers think that it is. It, the car will actively check to make sure you are awake. And if you don't, there's a series of uh, other notifications, warnings, and then the car will just simply slow down and pull over. It's that, that simple. So if you... Now, of course, like anything, anything can be defeated. Uh, so as of right now, you need to have a certain amount of pressure on the steering wheel, and that's how the car senses if you're actively paying attention. Now, the first warning will come as a uh, little blue warning on the center screen, or on your dash screen, excuse me, and uh, there's no audible tone, but it will ask you to please take, hold the wheel. Not take control, just hold the wheel. So you just kind of hold the wheel and senses that there's a little bit more weight on the steering wheel, and it goes away. Now, if you fail to reach that, then the warning will pop up again with an audible tone. Same thing. Just got to grab the wheel. Warning goes away. It sees that you're still awake, still conscious, and still alert, mostly. Uh, whether or not this is accurate, but from my observations, 
I found that if I grab the wheel when the car notifies me without the audible tone, so first warning, the warnings come up less frequently since it realizes, yeah, I am paying attention. I don't need an audible ding, 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 you know, to note to then check the screen. It comes up less frequently. But I found if I don't acknowledge the, the not audible warning, it will dig more frequently and check more frequently to make sure I'm still awake. So, what would happen? Okay, you missed that one. What's next? Okay, it'll ding again a little more frequently. If you still missed that, it'll continue to ding. So on and so on until it says, okay, something's not right. Either this guy or woman is not taking control of the steering wheel or paying attention. This is an unsafe situation. So then the car slows down and pulls over. Another situation is if the car would then also be unsure of its abilities to be able to control the vehicle, it will also flash the emergency warning, which is pretty much red plus siren going off. Woo, 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 woo. Take control of the vehicle immediately. So you must immediately take control. That one's a little bit louder. You know, and uh, steering wheel. Now, the steering wheel can also vibrate in certain certain situations as well. I turned it off because I figured it to me it is annoying as hell. Uh, but what would happen is okay. Take control of the vehicle immediately. So, and if you still don't, the vehicle would immediately slow down and come to a complete stop. It's always better to avoid that. So, moral of the story is take control. So, while someone could just sit back and doze off, they're not going to be able to do so for a long period of time, especially if the car is in an area with a less, less po- or more poorly marked lane markers. And, okay, it's losing the left line a little bit or losing the right line a little bit. That puts the autopilot more on alert saying, okay, uh, I really got to make sure this operator is paying attention because it looks like these lines aren't the most visible. I might lose them at any second. But uh, it it can go a little longer. I have had it go as much as 30 or 40 minutes without asking me for notifications. Uh, When I was on the freeway and no traffic, no cars, nothing around me, and basically ideal autopilot conditions. And I hope for the sake of usability that um, Tesla does not have to try and idiot-proof this too much more, uh, given the fact that it works good how it is now. Now, things are always improving. This is first-gen autopilot. This isn't second or third or fully autonomous. A lot of people get this confused with fully autonomous. It is not. It is driver assist meant to assist you. So, meant I'm still paying attention and it's just going to assist me. It's going to keep me in the center of the lane, adjust my speed, make sure I don't do something stupid and hit somebody or the vehicle in front of me. Uh, Statistics show so far, uh, apparently, uh, with autopilot active, you are 50% less likely to have an accident. And so far, um, I can safely say that autopilot has saved me from a few close calls where people, other drivers were not paying attention, swerved in my lane, or ran a stop sign, and uh, the autopilot managed to catch it fairly quickly, and uh, has been able to save me from a fender bender to a major accident. Uh, Now, not quite autopilot yet, but... Uh, I had a loaner about a year ago. I had the autopilot hardware, but at the time it was only traffic-aware cruise control, uh, which obviously is not accident, you know, collision avoidance and whatnot, but it was still able to sense a vehicle drifting into my lane during a rainstorm uh, and uh, managed to apply just the right amount of brakes to slow me down uh, to prevent that trucker from hitting me. I'm drifting off topic here. So back to the moral of the story is uh, don't fall asleep while under autopilot. You know, 
next year, the year after, once uh, uh, sensor suite number two, more cameras all the way around, a much more sophisticated system and programming. I mean, now things are starting to change. That's that's the shift to completely autonomous, which we don't quite know how exactly that's going to turn out. At least most of us don't. But uh, for the time being, don't fall asleep. Now, we still don't know exactly for sure if the person who was caught sleeping, presumably, uh, under autopilot really was. I mean, they were turned and they had their head against the window or against the side. I think their, their seat back was a little bit more and they had their uh, head against the pillar there. And, uh, I mean, they could have just been resting their head and getting a little more comfortable but still awake and paying better attention. But it's always best to, you know, maintain a regular driving position because you never know when you're going to have to take control of the vehicle. Now, I haven't had to take control of the vehicle at all since getting on the freeway. The only thing I've had to do was cruise control, or, uh, shifter to change my lane so I'm not stuck behind a deadly slow semi. It's a 70 mile an hour speed limit. I don't feel like doing 55. <coughs> but uh, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, but I'm just trying to clear up some of the misconceptions are this isn't something where you can just fall asleep and wake up at your destination. If you do fall asleep, chances are the car is going to find out pretty pretty quick and then try and force you to take control of the vehicle or at least give you an alert to show that you are still conscious. That being said, just kidding. That being said, time to go home. Smile, cheese.